Hello everyone, it's Derek. Today is the two month mark ever since we started the COVID-19 poker challenge about two months ago. And um, our original goal was to uh, deposit $1,000 and then our goal was to quadruple it in one month, which makes it 4000 in one month. And we obviously failed that goal. Uh, I think we hit around like 3200 when it was um, right around the one month mark. Um, as you can see, like we're going through some kind of pretty bad downswing to begin the challenge. However, um, I wouldn't say it was all playing bad. It was uh, probably like 75% just running bad and 35% playing bad. But obviously, there are a lot of uh, spots where we could definitely play better. Um, as you guys can see, um, um, we had ever since we started this, the the challenge, and then it has been like going down, and even until like here, um, even though it shows like negative three thousand, um, but at this point we're actually still up like a thousand something because of rakebacks. Um, as you can see, like this is the total amount rakeback we pay, uh, almost seven grand, and I get about seventy five percent to eighty five per um, percent rakeback. So. 75% of those money is actually c coming back to us. So you, you deduct that uh, from the losing, <clears throat> then we're actually, actually, we're actually up like, um, I think 1700 to like 2000 when, when, when we're actually supposed to be down like three grand. Um, so today I'm just gonna go over um, what we did uh, during this entire journey. And hopefully um, my experience can help you guys out. Um, so doing like around like here, I think I hire my friend as my coach to look at my stats for a little bit, and then he fixed a lot of my leaks, and then it starts slowly going up, and then we we start running back like again like like th this run was really brutal I remember, and here I think I hired him for like another hour, and then he fixed more leaks, and then from from there um, I was pretty confident in, in our game, and then it just um, start like going up slowly, and then of course you're gonna see like up and downs and then I think around here um, is where we decided to uh, move up to 1-2 so we're always been playing 25 cents to 50 cents because of bankroll restriction uh, we don't want to play uh, too big when we have a smaller bankroll so when we got here um, even though the stats show that it's negative 1426 but when we're at this point I think our bankroll was actually at at 3200 and then that's when when we decided to take shot at one two and then even though we had like some rough session to begin with and then ever since that we just kind of like on a rise right so today like we <clears throat> it marks the two month period and then uh we actually have a bankroll of uh, 11,000 which is uh, 11x which is really good and a lot better than i anticipated uh because of this run like uh mostly like we're playing well, but at the same time, we're running pretty good. I think I'm running like by buying above expected value. So um, the 11,000 might seem a little bit um, of luck involved. Um, if we run just normal, I think this is more like maybe like 9,500 or something, but it's still a pretty good um, win rate and almost like 9x our, our bankroll ever since uh, two months ago. Um, I'm just gonna go over <clears throat> some of the hands we play like earlier part like maybe like around here uh, Before I hire my friend as a coach to look look out for my leaks. Um, I, I play some hands. That's um, Not ideal like definitely something that like definitely some mistakes that I wouldn't be doing today I'm just gonna put in the filter uh, I mark those hands so let's just put it in and we go to hand details, text as bad hands. Okay. Uh, save and apply. And we go by sticks. Okay. So it's a total of like um, nine hands. Uh, we're just gonna go over one by one, and then I'll let you guys <coughs> know like uh, what what I'll, I'll show you guys what we did, and then I'll go over with you guys how I will play those hands nowadays because those are the mistakes that I no longer makes like I almost never makes those kind of mistake anymore so let's just go go over the first hand so the very first hand we have ace-jack suited in middle position and under the gun race uh, we decide to 3-bet uh, this is definitely a fine line if today I, I'm playing this hand I'm still gonna 3-bet 
Um, I'm folding a lot as well, but three batting is definitely a, a, a very good option. I'll say like maybe 60% of the time we should three be, should be three batting here, and then another 40% of the time should be a fold. So this is totally fine. And everybody folded on small blind, four bet to twelve dollars, and this is a very strong sign, right? C because under the gun race, uh, race, and then we under the gun plus one three bet, and then as small blind, he normally has to have a f super strong range to just uh, three bet under the gun race. But there's only a race, uh, there's already a race under the gun and three bet under the gun plus one, and <coughs> he's still putting a four bet. So here. Um, I'll, I'll put in like ace king, uh, queens, jack, uh, probably not jacks. Jacks is probably a fold here. Um, so I'll I'll give him like ace king offsuit, ace king suited, and queens plus. So ace is kings, queens, ace king. Um, pretty much nothing else. He's never bluffing here because our range is just way too strong. Um, big blind fold, um, under the gun fold. The right play here, if I play this hand today, this is the easy fold. Like it's I, I don't even think twice about it. But back in the day, obviously. Um, our our game was not polished enough to to not make this kind of mistake, so we decided to call. Um, this is definitely a mistake. And then flop was the queen six deuce two, uh, two club, so we flopped flopped the not flush draw. And as play, he checked to us. Uh, if if I decide to go this line, like on the flop, I'm checking behind here. I'm almost never betting because we only like we don't be anything, right? So. His range is aces, kings, queens, and ace king. Like we don't be none of those hands. If we put in a, a bet, maybe ace king will fold, but that's about it, right? And even that ace king might still call you once. So I wouldn't put in another bet here. So this is definitely a check back. I don't know what I did back in the day. Uh, I decided to do a small c bet, which is kind of bad because uh, if we are betting here, we're gonna bet like pretty big, like twenty dollars or something. So ace king will fold, right? If we do small c bet, like ace king is never folding here. So this is definitely a mistake, uh, and then he called, turns another queen, and he checked to us, um, if I am playing this hand today and then we did the c-bet as it played out, uh, this is definitely a check behind, because uh, cause another queen definitely doesn't help our, our range that much, and then it's it just that <clears throat> he could have a boat here. So we're pretty much drawing that. So there's no reason to barrel this, and then just take a free card and see if we can hit it flush. I don't know what I did. Uh, I bet pot and wrapping the queen. Uh, actually, jam. Uh, this is pretty brutal, pretty bad. Cause um, when he called the flop, like like we're betting this basically only for ace king to fold. But since we have ace of club, so we're blocking ace king pretty much. So <clears throat> if he has, he has like ace king with just king of clubs, he's probably not calling the flop. Um. Very small chance that he might call that, but but like this is not good. Um, I guess we're, we're just betting for ace king to fold, but but he has a lot of aces, kings, and queens here. Uh, he call, and then he has kings, and then we lose. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't play this way. And if I played this hand today, I'm folding pre flop, so I only lose like what four dollar, like four 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 dollar four and a half dollars instead of losing like the entire stack, which is like fifty five dollars, right? So if you if you look at, look at those spots, if you play like like the difference of playing optimal versus playing kind of bad, like the difference is huge, right? Even though one hand is only like like the diff like like four dollar four and a half dollar versus like fifty five, that's already huge. And then imagine like if you Make this this mistake like ten times, a hundred times. It's so much money that's that's lost here. So this is definitely not a mistake I'll make today. Uh, but it's good to see that I was kind of playing terrible. Uh, next hand, uh, we have Ace Queen off under the gun. Uh, we raise facing a three bet. Uh, I'll probably four bet here. It's a four bet fold. I, I don't like calling here. Uh, I don't know why we did. Uh, we four bet, so which is good, and he called. Uh, flop, ace high, three, three, three hearts, and then we have the queen of hearts. Here, if uh, today I'll probably do a small c bet be between a small c bet to check. I think checking is fine too. Uh, small c bet is fine as well. Uh, we did a small c bet. Uh, he raised, double. Uh, if I play this hand today, I'll probably just flat call, never raising here. Because uh, he could have e easily have ace king, he can have a set, and uh, he could have like ace of clubs. Uh, I mean ace of heart with like whatever, like ace king, 
like we're drawing pretty dead against that. Uh, so this I probably just call and then probably check for the turn and if he bet again. Oh shit, we decided to just jam. Uh, this is kind of like terrible because he's only calling here with ace king and maybe with the uh, king of hearts, right? So that that hand basically have us drawing dead. Uh, yeah, this is this is kind of bad. Like, yeah, I wouldn't play this way. Uh, let's see what happened. He calls, and uh, we have trips, and he is king. Yeah, um, I wouldn't play this way today. Um, it's it's just spewing super hard. Like we lost like what like ninety dollar here, uh, which is huge. Uh, we could probably like if we call this bet and then check for the turn. If he like shot or something, then we save like what? We save like sixty-five dollars. So this is like a huge mistake. Uh, we could we could only lose like twenty dollars. Instead, we lose like eighty-five. So this is a huge mistake as well. Um, let's go over the next hand. A nine suited under the gun is definitely okay to open. Uh, we raised. I uh, guess three bad by cutoff, and we decide to call. This is fine, I guess. Um, I probably just fold if uh, if I'm playing this hand today. I probably just fold, uh, depending on if we have any history with the, this guy. Like this guy is a 15, 13, uh, three percent, three bet, uh, pretty tight solid player. I probably just fold, um, but calling is not the worst. Uh, we flat middle pair. We check. Uh, definitely calling this. Okay, we called, and turns another queen. Um, I guess check calling here again is fine because there are two flush draws out there and then he can have obviously have a lot of jack 10 which is a straight draw we still beat uh, he bet 11 I will probably just call here oh shit um, this is pretty bad uh, I don't know why I did this uh, this was like a month ago like like maybe like six seven weeks ago so I have no no idea what I was doing uh, I just pick up some uh, some mark hands that I play bad and then I was looking at it again and then now I realize how, how how big of a mistake this is. So we, we raise double, we're wrapping the queen, right? If we have a queen here, we're never doing this race. If we have a queen here, we check jam. Like we're never just raising double. If we have a queen here, we'll just check shot for like 45, 80, like $50 check shot here. Because there's a lot of draws out there. Jack 10, and then a lot of club draw, a lot of hard draw, a lot of combination draw, gut shot and flush draw. So check jamming definitely gets the best value. If we really have a queen here, I'm check jamming here. I'm never doing this. So this is like kind of like stupid it's, and suicidal, uh, especially with what we have. Like we have, if we have like absolutely nothing, check jamming is fine too. But since we have a nine, we have somewhat of a, of a our, our hands not like completely worthless. We still beat those uh, some of the draw, right? So this obvious no reason to do this. Probably just check all, and then evaluate on the river. That's that's the optimal play. Uh, this is just straight up terrible, and then he he just called, and then river is a club. Uh, okay, and then we have twenty eight dollars, and then pass forty six. So basically, we have zero equity here. Uh, if even if we play this way, like this is totally a fold, right? Um, there's no reason to bet this river because he's never folding. So a pie is sixty five dollar, and then we only have twenty eight dollars left. So this is never a bad. Just check fold and give up, and or check fold and then see like maybe he has like jack ten of heart or something, and then hit miss, or like king jack of heart, king ten of heart, something like that, and then we still beat that. So it's definitely just check, just um check fold, or check call, right? Um, uh, betting just makes absolutely no sense. Right, because he's bluffing, he's folding. Right, we are not getting any more more money. But if if he has one of those hands that I talk about, like Jack Ten of Heart, King Jack, King Ten of Heart, then we should definitely just check it to him and then and then let him bluff at it, and then we can call. Right, uh, leading out like this just absolutely makes no sense. If he calls, he has a queen for sure, or uh, at least a queen, or sometimes a lot of boats, or even backdoor flush. Uh, he calls and he has king queen. Uh, okay, so this is pretty bad, pretty bad hands, pretty pretty badly played. Um, uh, next hand, we have ace queen off on the button, mid position open, and we three bad. That's pretty standard. And he decided to call. Uh, Jack knight three. He check it to us. Um, I I don't like see betting here because Jack knight three just uh. 
just <laughs> with two hearts, just just connect with calling his calling range too often. I don't know like what what C batting can can achieve here. Even if it's a small C bat or like big C bat, I just don't don't see the reason here. Uh, but we decided to go with for the small C bat. Uh, he called, uh, turns a queen, uh, which make us uh, top pair top kicker. He checked it to us. Uh, this is definitely a check behind here because queen completes a lot of uh, straight draw, so he has he could have like ten eight and then uh, that completes ten queen completes ten eight. He can have a lot of, a lot of queen jack, and then that will help his range as well. Like queen just helps a lot, a lot of his range as well, his calling range. So he could have like queen jack here. He could have queen nine here. He could have ten eight. He could have just queen just helps helps his range a lot, right? So I'll probably just check behind here. Um, uh, we just had to bet. I guess this is okay too. Like we're still charging flush draws, or combination draws like Jack Ten, Queen Ten, like Ten Nine. So I guess this is fine. Um, he jammed. Uh, this is totally a fold. Like if I play this hand today, this is like hundred percent fold. Like I wouldn't even think too much about it, because Queen just helps his range way too much, and by him checking check jamming here. I just don't see it's a bluff. Uh, I mean, I guess he could have like, like queen ten of heart, I guess. But most, more often than not, he has a mate hand here. So I'll probably just fold here. Most likely, I'll just fold here if we play the hand today. Uh, but we decided to call, and uh, he had a set. Okay, this is just like another example. Like if we just fold here. If we just fold here, instead of losing like everything, we still have $34. So we save $34, right? And instead of losing 60, that's like that, that's actually huge. So if we just fold here, we only lose like $24. But we decided to play this way. Instead of losing $24, we lose the whole stack, which is $60. Um, those spots adds up. Like one hand, two hands, like it probably doesn't really that matter that much. But if you're like playing a lot of hands, like if you face the same situation like ten times, a hundred times, like this is a lot of money that that will add up. Um, this is like like I I wouldn't make any of those mistakes nowadays. But like obviously a month ago, I wasn't playing optimal. Uh, maybe because of downstream or something. Uh, I, I was just not playing well. Um, okay, so let's go to the next hand. Uh, we have Jackson a big line. Cut off raise, uh, small blind call, definitely a three bet here. Uh, Six dollar. I think it's this is fine. Um, I'll probably do the same. Now, uh, got called, got called. Okay, so 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 this guy could have like ace queen type of hand, ace queen king queen suited type of hand. This guy could have like a lot of pocket pairs. So this guy doesn't have anything strong, cause he he he, he flat call a raise. And flat call three bad. So I'll put this guy on a lot of small pocket pairs, two middle pocket pairs, like maybe sevens, sixes, and lower. Uh, probably not eights. Um, I guess eights sometimes too uh, if he's a bad player, uh, but never nice. So so pocket pocket eights and below, right? And the flop is nice seven deuce, which hit his range a lot. Uh, I wouldn't worry about this guy too much. Uh, I bet like seventy five percent of pot. Uh, he fold. He, he this doesn't help his range as, at all. Like I say, he has a lot of ace jack, ace queen, king queen, um, suited off suit, some, something like that. Sometimes he'll have like ace queen. Um, so he fold, and we got mid raise to twenty seven. Uh, since we're pretty deep, I'll probably just call here. Like I, I'm not gonna fold to a mid mid raise. Uh, so I'm probably just gonna call here. Um, if 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 we play the hand today, I don't know what what we did. We'll see. Oh shit! This is bad. Uh, yeah, this is bad. Cause when he made raise, he's saying that he has a set or like on this board. He's saying that he has a set or like a combination draw, like ten a of clubs or something, like open ended and and flush draw, something really strong, like a really strong draw, or a set. Right? He's never have anything else because we we just put him like his range is like pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes, fives, fours, deuces. Threes, right? So when he when when he did this, like he has a lot of set here. Uh, at worst, he will have like a combination draw, like gasha and, gasha and flush draw, which we don't have. We we, we still have like forty five percent equity against us, but against a set, we're drawing pretty much dead. Like we're down to like ten percent. 
uh, yeah, so this is terrible. This is really, really bad. Um, definitely not not a mistake I'll make nowadays. In the in the past month, I I haven't been making these kind of mistakes. Uh, but it's it's always good to look look back at what you did before and admitting that you were kind of play terrible. Like it it always helps. Like a lot of people they they don't do this, but everybody should. Uh, rather, it's you looking at it yourself or having a coach look look after you. It's re it's really beneficial for your game. Uh, yeah, he called, and I think he has a set. Yeah, he had pocket sevens. Like he, th th that, that's a range that we put it, we put we put in on, right? Uh, yeah, this is just bad. Like if if we play this hand today, I'll call this twenty seven raise, and then let's say if the turn is a queen, and then he barrel, and then I'm folding, I'm folding the turn. So instead of losing like, how much we lost here? In instead of losing like ninety dollars, we are losing twenty seven plus like six. So we're only losing thirty three, so instead of losing ninety dollars, we lose thirty three. So we save like almost sixty dollars by by playing optimal. Uh, but obviously we were not playing optimal, so instead of losing thirty three dollars, we lose ninety. Right. So those those spots adds up. Like I said, uh, let's go to the next hand. Uh, King Queen off suit mid position. Open that's pretty standard. Uh, gets called. Gets called by big blind. That's fine. We flop open ended and two over cards. Uh, definitely a C bet. Um, probably will bet a little more if I played the hand today. I'll probably bet like three dollars instead of just a small C bet because Jack Ten, three Jack Ten just connect a lot. Like connect very often with their range, so I'll probably bet a lot of, a, a little bigger. Uh, we gets raised. Um, for this is a call. Uh, I'll never raise here. Um, this is obviously a call. Uh, he could have Jack Ten. He could have a lot of um, Ace Jack. Uh, he could have a set. He could have a flush draw. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a call. I don't see any reason to raise. And we raised. Okay. Uh, this is kind of bad. And he just called. Uh, turns at eight. We don't have anything. This is a problem with raising with draws, especially against somebody who's already raised you. Uh, if you're three bad, like well, what do you do if you miss, right? So here, I don't even know what we do. We probably just jam. Okay, we did. <laughs> At least we did that part right. And he called. He, I don't know what he has. Uh, we miss. And he had a set. Yeah. Uh, this hand, if we play today, if I play this hand today, I'm only calling this race. And then on the turn, we're, we're gonna check it to him. He's probably gonna bet again, and we just fold, right? So instead of losing sixty dollar, we will be losing. So we call this bet. That's six twenty-two. That's like nine dollars, maybe like eight dollars. And then we check fold the turn. So we we only lose eight dollar in this this hand, right? Instead of losing sixty. So eight dollar versus sixty. That's that's how much difference a, a, a misplay can can cost you, right? So if we play optimal, we lose eight dollars, but we're playing poorly, then we lose sixty dollars. Uh, yeah, this is kind of bad. Let's go over the next hand. A seven suited raise under the gun. That's no problem. Under the gun plus one just called. Heads up, we flop. Uh, got shot straight draw over cards and backdoor flush draw. Um, this is definitely okay to see bet, uh, but I'll see bet either <coughs> probably like small see bets, like maybe like just a dollar. Okay, that's not bad. Uh, he raised. This is definitely a call because we have a gut shot and uh, we have backdoor flush draw, and we still we, ace should be also good. So we have over cards. Not sure about seven, but ace is definitely good. So we still have like seven outs. Uh, minimum. So this is a call. Okay. Okay, turns a nine of hearts, so we pick up extra equity. Uh, have the not flush shot right now. Uh, we check it to him. That That's fine. He barreled ten dollars. Uh, this is a call. Uh, I wouldn't fold it um, because ten actually gave us a uh, double gutter as well. So eight, eight makes us a straight as well. And then we pick up the flush shot. Definitely not folding here. Uh, probably not raising because he can have a lot of sets and two pairs. Uh, okay, we just call. That's good. And river, we hit the straight, uh, higher end straight. Uh, probably just check to him. 
Uh, I don't see the reason to bet here because we don't have that many seven in our under the gun raising range. So this is probably just a check, and then he will never put us on a seven. So he might just wrap seven and bluff us. Um, so that way you can make the most value. Uh, I don't see any reason to bet here because in our range we just don't have that many seven. So betting makes no sense. If we have like a set like a pocket nice or something, let's say if you, if you have pocket nice, we're not betting this river. We're still check calling. So betting makes no sense. Check calling is definitely the best play. Uh, but I didn't agree, and I bet 25, which is kind of bad, I think. And he jammed. Oh my god, uh, this is a gross spot. Uh, we're only losing to 7-8. Um, yeah, uh, this is pretty brutal. Uh, I probably will call <laughs> as played, but I wouldn't put myself in this position. I'll probably just check call here. And we call, and then he has seven eight. Oops. Okay, so we lose like how much? We lose like ninety five dollar here, almost like a hundred, <coughs> almost a hundred dollars. So instead of losing like ninety five dollars, what could we do better? If we just check out, check out the river. Let's just assume that he bet the same amount. He probably bet something like this, cause now he probably think we have like aces or kings. Uh, that that that's our range, right? Aces, kings, queens, jacks. Uh, he'll probably bet like something like thirty dollars, maybe at, at most. Twenty-five is likely. Sometimes twenty. So let's just assume that he bet twenty twenty-five. Let's just take an average, and and we we, we check call right, and then we lose this pot. How much we lose? Twenty-five plus seventeen, eighteen. It's like forty-three. Was it? Yeah. If we just call. We just lose 25 plus um, 17, so we lose $43. Instead, we lose everything. Uh, not everything. He has a little under, a little less. So 25. Okay, so we lose extra $50, right? <clears throat> so instead of losing just 43, we lose 93. That's that's what that, that's how much uh, this misplay cost us. If we just check out the river. I would lose somewhere between like let's say 37 between 37 to 30 uh, 47 instead then we lose like 95 so this is how much this misplay cost us like I wouldn't make this mistake today I'll just check out the river so yeah this is kind of bad let's go over the next one ace queen off to mid position open pretty standard getting three bad uh probably four batting and calling both are fine uh, we decide to four bet. I'll probably, uh, yeah, this sizing is okay, I guess. And he called a six four Rambo. Um, small C bet is fine. Checking is fine as well. Okay, we went for a small C bet. He called, turns a king, which makes him less likely to have a king, but he can obviously have an ace king right here. It's definitely in his range. I'll actually put in an ace king here once he called the flop. So on this turn, I'll probably just check. Uh, and since we're pretty deep, we're like 200 big blind deep, really, really deep. Uh, we bet, okay, this is not good. Uh, sizing is terrible too. If we, I, I, if I, I'm playing this hand today, if I decide to bet this turn, I'll probably bet like 25. 11 is just way, way too little, and then we're playing super deep. Uh, betting this is just, just weak. Uh, even if we have ace king, we're betting like 25. And in his eyes, we have a lot of king ace kings here because we four bet preflop. Uh, this this sizing is just not good. Um, but if we play nowadays, I'll, I'll probably just check. I'll check here. I'll never bet. If I bet, I, I'll bet twenty five. Um, he called. Reverse a four, which makes our kicker completely useless. Definitely a check here. Okay, at least I did that part right. And he bet twenty six. Uh this is rough. Probably a call. Probably a call. Um, yeah, as play, it's probably a call. And then I'll hope. I'll, I'll expect a lot of chopping, maybe. Um, he has a lot of ace queen here as well. Uh, yeah, as play, I'll probably just call. Oh, he had pocket aces. Holy. Okay. Um, so we lose like $52 here. Could we have played this better? 
on the turn we'll check and then he'll probably bed and then we'll have to call on the river uh, probably check call again oh, on the river I think we can fold on the river we'll check again he bet we fold so we'll probably save like one bet we we'll probably save like we we'll probably save like $25 uh, playing optimal so this is not a huge mistake but it's still like a major mistake because because twenty six dollars is still a lot. It's like half a buy-in. Uh, if we we constantly making mistake and losing half a buy-in, then it adds up, and then it, it's it it's just the difference between winning player and losing player. Like winning player would not make this kind of mistake. So, uh, yeah, I probably just check all the turn and then just check for the river when he bet again, because uh, he wouldn't be betting anything else other than ace king or aces and kings. So that 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 is it. We still like misplayed this hand, and then we lost extra half buying, which is huge. Um, like I said, everything adds up. Here we have aces on the button, facing under the gun race. Uh, definitely a three bet. Okay. Uh, he just called. When he called, I put him on like a lot of um, pocket pairs, uh, ace queen suited, ace ace jack suited type of hands. Uh, six four three. Um, he check. I probably just check back here. Uh, I could you, small C betting is fine. Like we can bet like like three dollar here is fine. Um, it's it's between small C bet and checking. I would say 50 50 Either either way is fine. Um, the frequency is probably 50 50 as well. Uh, this is way too huge. Um, this this bet doesn't achieve much because like like he can have a lot. Like he can have a lot of sets here. Like like I say, like like when when he carved three back preflop and raised under the gun, like he just have a lot of ace queen suited, ace jack suited, and small pocket pairs. Uh, yeah, so there's no reason to bet this much. I'll just do like small c bet, but let's see. Um, he check raised. Holy, uh, this is kind of gross. Uh, he's never check raising with pocket tens and pocket nines here. I don't think pocket nines and pocket tens should be just a uh, just a just a just a call. So when he check raise here, uh, I think we just have to go for it. Um, he can have some like suited connector, like knight a suited, knight eight of heart, ten, ten of heart, knight ten of heart. So I think he check raise with just jam, just with the way he play. Um, I, I I guess we did it, the right thing, and he calls. Uh, he has pocket force. Uh, okay, this hands. Um, I probably check. Okay. If I play today, I'll small C bad, and then if you raise, we obviously getting in. We are probably not folding aces, a uh, hundred big blind deep. If we check behind, he's gonna bet the turn, and then I'm gonna call. He's gonna bet the river. I'm gonna call. Probably that way we'll save a little bit of money. But it doesn't. But 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 even I say that, it doesn't mean that you always have to uh, check behind on this kind of flop. It's just that when you check behind, and then he bet the t bet the turn, we call. Bet the river, we we call. We probably save like. Like twenty five dollars or something, but if we decide to go for the small C bet route, and he check raised us, we're getting in. like we're not folding there. So I guess it, it turned out the same if we do a small C bet. But if we check behind, we save like a little bit of money. But at the same time, we, he could have like a lot of tens, nice, you know, tens, nice jacks, eights. We might get the stacks as well. So um, I don't think this hand is that is that bad um, compared to the others. Just small mistake. And I think this is the last hand. Um, yep. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And um, our next goal is probably just to um, try and um, try to uh, quadruple our bankroll again. I guess uh, it's gonna be a little harder since I don't know if we're able to to move up because on ACR it's just not that that. That many big games. Um, X. Yeah, I think the biggest game on ACR is just uh, just one two, two hundred forty buying. That's it. So it, it'll be a little difficult right now to um, double or quadruple our hands again, uh, our bankroll again. But we're gonna try, and hopefully you guys enjoy. We're having a great, uh, very good June. Uh, this month we are up like almost ten grand um, with the rake back. We're looking at around like ninety five hundred. Something like that. Um, we play about 57 hours, 
and our hourly rate is 126 plus our rate back, which is uh, $30. So we average about like $155 per hour this this month, which is pretty good. Hopefully, ho hopefully it continues. It's only like a 40,000 hand stretch. Uh, sometimes uh, upswing can last for like 200,000 hands. Hopefully that's the case. And I'll see you guys next time on stream. Uh, peace.